Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Borough Fan TV and the Monday Night Show with me, James Hutchinson. So, Borough fans, the Easter programme is over. Games with Bournemouth and Huddersfield have taken place. We've picked up a point. No further goals. And I think it's fair to say that our playoff hopes are hanging by a thread. Joining me to look back on the games uh, over the weekend and look ahead to the game against Swansea and other Borough matters is Damon LaRoche. Great to see you, Damon. Great to see you. See you, James. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having me. No problem, mate. No problem. Um, Borough fans, as always, been a disappointing day today, but we'd love you to join the debate, get involved on tonight's show. Um, we'd love to hear from you with regards to the recent performances and obviously uh, issues with regards to the managerial future of Chris Wilder. What's your thoughts on that? We'll start the show with that in a moment. And do you think Borough's chances of the top six this season have uh, have gone or not? So. Get involved. You know the usual way to do that, Borough fans. It's your platform to do that, so make sure you join us tonight and take part in the show. Christian Lambs uh, got in touch with us straight away, Damon, and we'll open the show up with this. When is Wilder leaving then? Um, this came out on Friday when, obviously, Sean Dyche was relieved of his duties at Burnley. Um, what's your take on the whole situation with regards to Chris Wilder? He's had a couple of opportunities, both after the game on Friday, then today, to dismiss the link. And he hasn't done that. Do you think there is any mileage in the fact that he he may be moving on, or do you just think it's him concentrating solely on what he's doing with the borough with regards to the fixtures they've had over the last few days? Well, for me, um, hearing the news when it came out a couple of days ago, um, it was being made Bucky's favourite, I think, uh, James, with it all. Um, for me, I just want him to solely concentrate on borough, really, and but we. We've had a, a discussion before we started, James, and um, due to his body language today, today it suggests that he could be on his way. Do you know? Yeah. I mean, which is a shame because it just undoes, undoes all that hard work that he's done. I mean, it is purely speculation, Dim, but it, it does seem that there's a lot of mileage in this. The, the bookies who don't often get these things wrong have got him as installed as Red Hot favourite to be the next Burnley manager. Tom M's gone uh, one step further and he's, he thinks that Chris Wilde will be gone by the weekend. Uh, and apparently, according to him, he's called a meeting with the players tomorrow. Uh, and Hans Grun, as you saw earlier, but he'll be really disappointed if he goes. He, if he goes, he's a Judas. I'm fuming. I mean, <laughs> the thing is as well, Damon, it's really disappointing whether it uh, if it does happen because it, it, it appears all the last six months there's been a real feel-good factor building around the club, the fans... Yeah. Have really taken to Chris Wilder and the, the squad as a whole this season, certainly in the second half of the season. And it seems like something was building at the club. So, how disappointing would it be for Chris Wilder to move on at this stage? It would be massively disappointing, James, because um, under Warnock, we didn't have that identity. And when uh, Wilder was drafted in um, at the right time, I, I might add, um, he brought some great results. Uh, and we've had a good run in the cup um, and everything else that goes with it. And I just think the last few games we've run out of steam. Um, and I think his, his body language today, I mean, we, we were waiting after the game and um, he, he was he was in, in there for ages. He, we, we never managed to get, because my dad wanted a photograph, he never managed to get one because... He was in. He was in for a long time. Whether that we was talking to Steve Gibson, that we don't know. But it doesn't. It doesn't look good, James. That's the, that's the thing. Yeah. Um, Craig Kettlewell's got in touch. If Wilder goes, let's move for Deitch. Good swap, I think. And I think it's no. a bit. Don't don't you you don't want to go down that route. I think maybe it's a bit premature to look at next managers yet when we've still got a manager as it is at the moment. But. I think in some senses, Dame, you have to take it as a compliment that Chris Wilder's getting linked to jobs with Premier League clubs, which is what Burnley are at the moment. Yeah. Um, but in a way, do you think it could be a poison chalice for whoever takes over from Sean Dyche at Burnley? He was there for 10 years, and he did, whether you like him or not, I think he did an amazing job at Burnley on the funds he had. Do you think, in a way, Chris Wilder is maybe taking on like a poison chalice or maybe taking on something which might be a thankless task because... Maybe there's only one way for Burnley now, and that's down. And would he not be better off trying to build something at Middlesbrough and, and seeing what, how far he can take that? And in future, maybe see what other jobs come after that, or seeing how far he can take the borough. What do you think? Yeah, I think I think he should stick with Borough really, because um, even though Burnley are a Premier League side, or 
still a Premier League side that we don't know until the last game of the season um, for me because everything goes down to the last game. It always does. It always has been for me. Um, that I think I think it would be disappointing if he goes now with so many the like, little time remaining left to turn it around for us, so to speak. Um, but if it's in the pipeline, it's in the pipeline. Do you know what, James? Uh, if he's going to go, he goes he goes and we get whoever it wants to come in you know and it's it's going it's tough but it is what it is it's money isn't it james money talks yeah lee bailey's been in touch with us hope you're well lee he said uh, i don't want dash 10 years of finishing 16th no cup runs hardly any academy products brought through it's a myth that he's a brilliant manager yeah i take on board what lee's saying there damon but i also think to achieve what he has and constantly keep burnley in the premier league over 6 years i mean we had a nightmare season just that one year and we couldn't stay up. Yeah, he's kept the Burnley side with very little investment in the league for six years and maybe that comes at a cost as we've seen with Newcastle up the road that sometimes things like cup runs have been sacrificed uh, for the fact that it's kept them in the Premier League year after year. But would Dyche be a no for you, Damon, definitely? Uh, it'd be a no for me because I'd st- <laughs> to be honest, we were mentioning it today. Um, I don't think I don't think he's got over Chesterfield, to be honest, in, in the FA Cup in uh, 1990-odd. I still think he, he holds that grudge against us. Um, but it, it would be enough for me. I think you want to look to someone like likes of uh, Daniel Farker, as we said at the top of the show, um, and or uh, David Wagner, someone like that. Maybe he's to come in um, until the in, until a new... Uh, well, the new manager started, but I'm, I'm not sure where James, yeah. to be honest. David, David. I, it's, 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 I, it, I'm just baffled by the whole situation at the moment. It shocked me. Yeah, and I think David Bentley's picked up on a point here that a lot of Borough fans are saying. Because I think normally when you hear Chris Wilder's interviews, he's very forthright. When he's talked about games, he doesn't hide on anything. Yet it appears as though he's just trying to avoid the question when it's being asked to him with regards to the Burnley link. And Dave Bentley's take on it is that maybe he's using it as a leverage to get more transfer money, money in the summer. But if he does go, it's very poor from him. And do you think there might be something that behind the scenes we don't know about, something that's gone wrong or something that's maybe been promised with regards to funds in the summer or something that's gone uh, awry in the last few weeks? He's said, well, do you know what? I'm not sticking around with that. Or do you just think it's purely the link with Burnley? More funds will uh, be available there, I would guess. Do you think that's turned his head? Yeah. Yeah. Uh... I uh, think, like I say, I guess he, guess he was saying to us the, the other day. Um, I just think it's, for me, um, I don't know. It's it's a bit of both, James. Um, I think it could be money has turned his head. He, he'd be promised this, that and the other at Burnley. Uh, it could be the fact that Gibson's promised in certain players in January and we haven't delivered. Uh, even even though we got Sparar and we got other players, Balogun and Connolly in, and they haven't produced what the Cape of Ballad producing, and that's gone at air eye, hasn't it? So hope, hopefully, uh, fingers crossed, he does stay, but it yeah. doesn't look good, mate. It doesn't look yeah. good. Yeah, well, we're advanced, as we said, nothing's come out as yet, and uh, it is all speculation and rumour, but it's something that's not going away at the moment, and it appears as though. It's something that's going to run over the next few days, but continue to let us know what your thoughts are on it, Borough fans. And obviously, we can't uh, deny what's happened the last few days in terms of on the pitch, Damon. And it hasn't been a great few days on the uh, on the pitch for the Borough. No points um, in the two games before Easter. We've got one further point from these two games, but no further goals. That's four games without a goal. Um, just looking back to the Bournemouth match, I mean... Chris Wilder made a big decision before that game when he decided to drop Joe Lumley and brought in Luke Daniels. But in fairness, he was vindicated with that decision, wasn't he? He was, he was, and it was, he, he was fantastic in that game. Um, he really was, and he does so much work than what Joe Lumley does. I mean, Joe Lumley, he has mistakes in him. Daniels, I, I think, I think everyone, every keeper has mistakes in him, James. Um, but Daniels is kicking for me. He he doesn't dawdle on the ball. He doesn't pass it out from the back. He just kicks it, kicks it down the field, and that's what we want. You know, players fighting for the ball, 
and uh, creating chances in the final third. But for me, Daniels is is a good keeper. Okay, mate. Just with regards to the uh, managerial situation and all the speculation, uh, Victor Meldrew, I'm sure it's not the Victor Meldrew, where uh, I think our season maybe got one foot in the grave after today. He said uh, Deitch would have been all right straight after Pules because of the type of player that Deitch likes, but we've got rid of all them now. And you think that's another sort of frustration with Borough fans is that we have a managerial change and everything has to be almost thrown out again and you're starting up all over again, you're changing the whole makeup of the squad. While there's only been eight for six months, and hopefully he's here for longer, we really all hope that. But if it is a change and a new man comes in, obviously there'll be further changes again, and maybe in terms of the approach uh, and the, the style that the team play, it's just really frustrating, isn't it, Damon? It, it is, and it's like it's, as I said it before, James, um, when Wilder came in uh, under Warnock. Uh, Warnock was losing the dressing room and it was like the dog and pony show every week with him. And and Wilder came in and we've had great results, James. And it's only the last few games where our home forms dipped. Uh, and I think for me, it'd be disappointing just to just tear it up into little bits and start again afresh. Because it, it, just, it just undoes all the great hard work we, we, we've done this season. Yeah. I mean, there's uh, one of John O'Williams. Thanks for watching, mate. He said, why are you talking about him going? Um, it makes no sense whatsoever. As I say, it is speculation. and A lot of people do seem to think that there, there might be something in this. And Steve Crohn's made a good uh, point there that if he does want to go, if Chris Wilder wants to move on, that's his prerogative. We'll take the compensation and move on. Uh, and there'll be little other option at the club. Have it. If uh, Chris Wilder wants to move on, there's little point keeping a manager that... Uh, doesn't want to remain at the club, but it would be so disappointing because we had we have heard Chris Wilder say that he's here for the long term. He likes to build on a project and he, he sees this as a club where he can achieve things, do things. He's not a manager that walks away from things, yet here we are, six months after he's taken the job and speculation just seems to be growing by the hour that, that he may be uh, leaving very soon, Damon. Yeah, yeah I mean, um, and we, the reason why we're talking about it, James, is because he hasn't he hasn't dismissed it, has he? And mm. that's that's the huge point, and that's what Borough fans have got to get through through their heads, really. That we need to talk about it because if if you don't talk about it, it's just going to linger and linger and linger, and then it'll just it'll be one huge thing, and then it'll be a load load of backlash from supporters. And we can all have an opinion at the end of the day, and not everyone is entitled to it, but it's it's just going to. For me, it's just going to undo the hard work that we've already made, and it'd yeah. be disappointing. It would, it would, mate. But uh, as I say, we'll keep chatting about that through the show. But we'll go back to the Bournemouth game, mate. And yeah. It was a game of very few opportunities. Not a great deal to talk about in terms of the match, but I think, in fairness, that was due to a Borough backline that was marshaled by a thirty-seven-year-old who had another immense game on Friday, uh, and that's Sol Bamba. He was outstanding on Friday, wasn't he, Damon? He <laughs> just. It just makes me smile every time I put uh, every time he puts the Boris shirt on. Honestly, he's displayed at the back since Dale Fry picked up that injury uh, a couple of games ago. Um, it's been quite amazing, you know. It's what what that lad's overcome and, and beaten, you know, to come back prof playing professional football at his age, uh, a, a career ending that. Sometimes it would it would end someone's career, James. Um, it's it's testament of what money what money is, and he's a true gentleman as well. In that first half, one of the other talking points in that first half, Dan, was the penalty appeals. It was uh, two or three. Do you think any of them had any mileage in them? Do you think we should have had a penalty on Friday in that first half? I think one penalty we should have had for sure. Um, when um i think it was when Isaiah got dragged down in the in the in like got no he was, wasn't he wasn't dragged down sorry uh that was that was something else i'm thinking of uh <laughs> it was um it was the handball the first handball mm -hmm. um when uh he was as i was crossing it and he just it bounced up and hit his shoulder up here didn't it and i thought i thought it was a clear on ball personally um for me but the second one, not so much because he just bounced up, and you know that could be 
it could be 50 50 that one james you can get it or you can't get it unfortunately yeah. we didn't get both so <laughs> and as uh we try to hold on to that point in the second half towards the end of the game uh matt crook's got his 15th yellow card of the season and with it a three game ban is it an occupational hazard with the way that matt crook's plays that he's going to get these bookings or do you think this is something that should have been avoided should have been avoided i mean he's a rough and ready kind of guy i get that i like he i like him go, going in for a tackle i think any fan does but to pick up 15 yellow cards in the season is absolutely ludicrous um when when we need players of his stature in the team um because um it was pr it was proven that we will get on to today's game um but um that yeah I, I just think we we need we need to walk, watch the disciplinary tightrope all the time with there's not just them there's a few players that are, i just yeah. like him as well yeah and i guess Damon, if you've been a little bit critical with regards to the bournemouth game we created very little on the day um and we obviously haven't got on to today's game yet do you think, though, on Friday, that was maybe in terms of how we set up where we've been a little bit overcautious, bearing in mind we were playing a side that in the top two um, and got attackers like Solanke and all the other players that they have at their disposal? Or do you just think at the minute other teams have worked out how to play against us and it seems as though they're doubling up on Isaiah Jones and we have very little creativity in our side at the moment? Yeah, I think it's a lot of what you said, James, with Isaiah Jones. Um I think the the doubling up, tripling up, uh, if you want to so called say that as well. Um, they they found out our players. Uh, all our attacks come through Isaiah Jones, and when he was missing for them them two games, obviously he's came back against Bournemouth. He didn't put a foot wrong, and he got us got us the well earned point that we deserved. Uh, I thought we deserved at least three points out of it, but that's just me being biased, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> But, yeah, Dave, uh, Dave uh, Jones just mentioned, sorry, Dave, you mentioned there about uh, with regards to Matt Crooks to get booked 15 times in a season is shocking. He needs to do better with that part of his game. And I think right. it, probably Matt Crooks himself will maybe hold his hand up and say that some of those bookings have been needless and um, he, he's going to be a big miss. We missed him today. We're going to miss him the next two games. But hopefully it's some, uh, in a situation he's not in again next season. It, well, that's it. And... Um... It's it's just one of, it's just one of them things, isn't it, James? Um, you pick up silly bookings here and there, but there's a number of players at the club who've got that fiery mentality, um, that can love a love a tackle, the likes of Paddy McNair, Johnny Houghton. Um, there there can be, I mean, everyone can be hotheads. So let's be honest. If you put on a red shirt and put and put starring week in week out, I think you're gonna be. But I think it's I think it is. I agree with David. His comment there is it is ludicrous picking up fifteen yellow cards in the season. Yeah, yeah. I suppose lads, he is something. There's always a silver uh, lining to every cloud, and some people are taking a bit of pleasure to doing Derby County's demise and heading off the League One. Um, some people might say it's overdue and they should have gone down last season, but uh, yeah, they've put up a, a fair fight. But yeah, their time's up in the Championship for this season anyway. Uh, yep. Just before we move on from the Bournemouth game, Damon, um, I think the other frustration with regards to things in terms of the, the manager and things like that is that we've played Fulham recently, we played Bournemouth on Friday, and it just shows that within six months, Chris Wilder's come in, he's made us a really competitive side in the Championship, and it just shows that we're not a million miles away from the top places, and you just hope that I personally want him to stay at the club because I think he, he could do a great job here. He could take us on. And I think was, I was really pushing close for top two and definitely top six next season if we don't yeah. make the playoffs this year. And is that even more the frustration that you see? We're not far away now and it doesn't need a great deal of tinkering to get us up there. Yeah, I mean, it, James, I 100% agree with everything you said. Um, I think what pees me off is the fact being that it just be it just disrupt our season right now. Um, and for the sum, summer transfer window as well to bring and and a full pre season under his belt because this will be his first full season in charge of Middlesbrough mm -hmm. because he only come in halfway I think um, for the season so for me it just it just undo everything that we've worked for at this point in time but for me 
I think we're not a million miles off, as you said, James. I think we need a few goals, a couple of goal scorers. Um, if they, if you get that right, decent decent wings either side. You've got a nucleus of because we've already got a good back line. Just add another one to it, and I think we're uh, we're good. Yeah, there's a few uh, of our viewers getting in touch with potential players that they'd like to see come to the borough over the summer. Um, Stephen Cramborn's mentioned players like York, Chris of Comtry, who was certainly impressed when he played yeah. at the Riverside. Uh, Lucas Shaw at Reading, who's come back from a bad injury and hit the target a few times for them. Uh, I mentioned uh, Wes Fodringham, the goalkeeper at Sheffield United. Again, it's all if, but some maybe he's got to see what sort of funds are available to the manager in the summer, haven't we? And that'll be, I guess, dependent on what's sold and what money is available. Well, well that's, uh, that, that's it, James. I mean, are we going to. This is the biggest thing, and I've said it all summer with you, having a, um, with the Jed Spence situation. Um, is he gonna? Is he gonna sell him? Is he gonna keep him? Is he gonna like say we we'll look at him? Is he gonna be in the team? Personally, I don't think he will be. I think he'll be sold. Will 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 we get twenty million? Or, and will 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 we waste that? <laughs> Only time will tell, James. You know, but I hope hope and Wilder's here and he builds. What he's what he's already created because yeah. I think as I said we're lacking in a few areas address them areas and have a good go next season. Yeah, Big Bear's got in touch with us. Hope you're well, Big Bear. He said, "Feels like we just haven't been quite ready this year." Wilder is a great fit for the fans and the club, and we need to stick together. Next twelve months are going to be super exciting, and that's it. You see, I think everybody's so positive about the club at the moment, um, and. It's something we maybe haven't had over the last two or three, maybe even longer than that years in terms of the manager we've had in. It's been a bit of a grind. And it seems as though things are starting to take off and it'd be such a shame if uh, we were a bit derailed by a change of management. Hopefully that won't happen, Borough fans, as we say, but uh, we'll wait and see what happens in the next few days. But what we can't dispute is what's happened today um, in the game against Huddersfield at the Riverside. And unfortunately, Damon, any momentum that was gained from stopping the rock with those two defeats picking up a point on the south coast on Friday was uh, stopped dead in its tracks at the Riverside this afternoon. And for the second game running, we struggled to break down a well-organised opponent this time. It was Uddersfield. Uh, just really disappointing, wasn't it? It, it was. It was, James. Um, I think I spoke I spoke to you before the game and I don't know where I got 3-1 from because I must have been deluding myself. <laughs> but I think today we sort of let them play in in terms of we not we didn't nullify their attacks um and when we did create chances we don't have that shoot on site policy and um, like have a go if it deflects and you get a goal that way you know at least you've had a shot that's what we're craving out for not trying to walk it in uh, on the wings sideways passing back way you know that's what it seems to be all the time and that's why we haven't we i don't know where our home farm has gone because we were so good at home and we lost the last three yeah 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 on the flip side of that damon i think we've gone four away now without losing and conceding a goal which prior to then was a big problem wasn't it away from home so it's like we've addressed one side of the problem but now as you say um <laughs> it's the, the problem's now the home farm but uh We'll wait and see. This is Kendall keeps asking me. I think wants to know your thoughts on this. Do you think Wilder will actually leave? I mean, this is just speculation. Like I say, this is just your own thoughts. What What do you think, Damon? Do you think Chris Wilder will still be here next season? Um, my heart's saying yes, but my mind's saying no. And I've got to go with my heart. I hope so. I really do. But money always tells in football, James money always dictates where, where manager's gone and the manager's body language today says it all mm -hmm. were you surprised at today's performance because it, it i just thought it was flat really really flat and i get that they played on friday but so did huddersfield i know they didn't maybe have the traveling that we had to do but they played on friday as well and it just looked a really flat tired performance do you think we've just like ran out of gas at this stage of the season I think I think so, James. Um, I think we have we are suffering burnout. Um, Matt Crooks hasn't been the same player, even though he picked fifth up. Obviously, he was missing today. Um, 
Riley McGree in his place, I thought, did a magnificent job, even though we got absolutely beaten uh, by the better team on the day. Um, he, he, and obviously the the star men in the show, um, Paddy and Johnny Alston, as always. Yeah. Um, I was a bit surprised when um, Bamba came off like James. Um, I don't know if he picked up a knock or something. Um, I just but... he, he did very well to almost get through two full games in 72 hours when you think of his yeah. age and how much football he's played. I think it was a big effort. I mean, I think it, it maybe showed in his performance today that he played on Friday as well. I mean, what do you, what's your thoughts on this? Paul Nicholas has got in touch with us. Thanks, Paul. And he's just said, I think some of the players look like they've given up or simply just don't believe four games without a goal is worrying at this point of the season. And I mean, that is a big talking point amongst Borough fans. Yeah. I mean, four games, no goals. You put that solely down to the strikers, Damon, or is there more to it than that? There's more to it than that. It comes as a team. You have to you have to work together as a team. It's not just the strikers, James. We all know we need a goal scorer. That's evident. That's evident to see. Um, Connolly's not good enough. I mean, he's hype for one. Um, it's not, you're not going to score when you're five foot four or something. So, for me, he, he, he's, he was a poor choice bringing him in. Balogun, I'd like to take him on loan for another season, but if Wilder's not going to be here, then I can't see that happening. Um, and Corburn, for me, um, that lad, when he came on, he was he was good. He put himself about um, today. Um, I was I was happy with his performance, as I was with Riley McGreed and and obviously the usual um, two in Paddy and Johnny. Um, but we've got as Keith George just mentioned there, uh, yeah. Akpom, Big Uchi. We've still got them to come back, haven't we? So it just leaves food for thought where we're going to fit all these players. Well, yeah, because obviously uh, there's players that are here on loan at the moment in terms of the forwards, like you've said, Balogun, Connolly, Sparra. Um, do you think all three of them will be on the way not to return next season? And if so, if Uchi comes back, uh, Chubarak, Pom, that would suggest you still need to bring some more strikers in, don't you, to address yeah. the, the goal-scoring issue? I, 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 as, as I said, James, I think you need someone like... as you, as you Someone mentioned earlier in the show, like as you, Lucas Yao, like a Joel Perot from Swansea, um, someone who knows where the back of the net is in this championship. Even even a Dwight Gale, if you can get him on a low budget, but I doubt you can. No chance. Um, um, but me personally, I I just don't think we're strong enough. Definitely to go up on, on to make the playoff. I like to think we can make the playoff a place. Nothing would be. I'd be more proud, but I can't. I can't see it, James. Today was a must-win game, and we've we've fluffed it as we have done in the last couple of games. Do you think it's also in terms of when we said about quality? Do you think it's just a lack of strength in depth as well? Because until recently we've been in the FA Cup, so there's been additional games there. Um, do you think it's just that our squad isn't big enough to maybe sustain a, a top six push this season, or would you say? We'll look at Huddersfield, look at Luton. Maybe they've not got the biggest of squads. And Luton, yeah, uh, the yeah it's that. It, it is that, James. I see where you're coming from, but it's that. And then, like, you, as, as we said, we touched on it. Um, the 46 games in the championship season, and then a further six or seven in the cup. So there's 50 odd games in the season, hmm. which is absolutely mad considering you only get half of that in the in the Premiership. Um, is is tiring, and obviously they're going to suffer burnout. But I think we've we're not normally our burnout comes at Christmas, doesn't it? Um, but it's come come el, come a bit later <laughs> later on this year, um, which which is gutting to see. But um, at least we are in the championship. Do you know we, you know we could be struck. We could be a, a, a team that going out of business. I mean, some people haven't got a club. Yeah. And Damon, before we move off today's game, I mean, as often the case is in championship matches, first goal is hugely important. And once the Terriers took the lead today, there was, there, really, there was very little response from the Borough. We never really looked like getting back on level terms, did we? 
No, no, no. It's it. It was on. I was sat in the east, and James right, um, right at, at the halfway point, and I saw every, saw every little bit of it. You know, niggly tackles, um, arguing amongst themselves, the players. It's no good when you're doing that. I mean, you're not going to get back into the game when you're arguing amongst yourselves, and then. Does that surprise you, Damon? The players were, or do you just think it was the pressure of the game and the occasion? Or why did it surprise you? Because I noticed that in the second half, I saw Tav and Bowler getting quite heated and having a go at each other on the yeah, touchline. Did, did, does that surprise yeah, was, you? The players were getting like that today. Yeah, see, I was right behind that, and I seen that first hand, and uh, it does surprise me because you think, as a team, you'd be together as one. You know, you 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 need to gel if you want if you want a. Uh, be in this playoff picture and you want you want this fight right to the end but it the fight didn't seem there for me today james it really didn't um yeah i agree with michael there uh, we could be worse we could be derby <laughs> but um for me the j uh james the fight the fight wasn't there today we let them dictate play and they got their goal first and it's a set piece again we, we we're poor at set pieces conceding from a set player it's just leaving him unmarked it's poor yeah yeah david jackson makes a good point he said forest have played as many cup games as us and they are fourth in the league uh, and paul lewis has also uh sent in this response he said we are one of the lowest or even the lowest scorers in the top 10 and it says it all really and yeah, yeah i think a lot of people have said and they've pointed the finger at the january business that the club did and didn't bring in a new goalkeeper and the forwards that we've brought in, Balogun and Connolly, it's up for debate whether they've had a positive impact in their time at the club. Do you think the January transfer window didn't work out as well as maybe Chris Wilder hoped, Damon? Yeah. Um, is I mean, he said he wanted he said he wanted a couple more players from the Premier League and he didn't get what he wanted. Um, he's not saying who they were. Obviously, he's not going to. We all know that. Um, but for me, Connolly's not the answer. Um, you see, you see, you you're hearing it week in, week out now with the fans. Why is he picking Connolly over? Obviously, he's dropped him today and brought him on later on. But uh, you hear in the why is he playing Connolly over Balogun and Coburn and this, that, and the other. But only the manager sees. What he sees at the training ground, James, yeah. each and every yeah. week, he sees a different kettle of fish. Like Lee Saliki a few weeks back, he saw something different. What we haven't seen, you know what I mean? So it's it's only time will tell what what we're going to improve on. It's I mean for me, but today was shocking. Yeah, yeah. Andrew Smith uh, has also sent in a response where he said, why, why do we always have problems scoring? We've had numerous strikes at the club and not been able to score goals since the likes of Vaduta and Hasselbank. Uh, and I think it's certainly an area that's going to be addressed by whoever the manager is in the summer, whether that's Chris Wilder or somebody else, certainly an area that's going to need addressing in the summer. In terms of where we are at the moment, though, Damon, um, after the Easter fixtures, in terms of a percentage, what do you assess Borough's chances of being in the playoffs at the end of the season? Hmm. As I said, um, I know it's not probably not what the answer you want to hear, but me, me heart wants it, but my mind saying otherwise. Um, and I think most Borough fans would probably say, "No, it's over. It's over. It's finished." Um, but I'm going to remain positive. I hope we do. It's it's all going to come down to the final game of the season for me. Um, but these. The game in hand against Cardiff, what I was speaking to the fans after the game, the game in hand against Cardiff is the game you must win. If you don't win that, forget it. I think we need to win on Saturday. We need to just get some goals. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean, though, James. Get some goals. We need to get a win as soon as possible, Damon. I think I don't think we can wait till next Wednesday. Um, I, think yeah, I, mean, I think we've probably got to win a minimum now of three of the last four. So... It's going to be a long shot, but yeah, as you say, while there's hope, uh, there's still an, an opportunity and a chance. Paul Nicholas has said uh, January signs are always a gamble, make or break. Uh, Wilder needs to get tips off Robson with January signings. Yeah, Robbo definitely had a good uh, January transfer window in '98 with the strikers he brought in. They certainly delivered. Uh, but Michael Pellin, thanks for watching again, Mike Lee. Said, bottom line is we need Wilder to stay 
and build on this season, the next season, then I think we'll be all smiling at this stage next year. Uh, definitely hope you're right on that, Michael. And I think uh, if Chris Wilder was to stay, I think that would be for the benefit of the club. Uh, David Ball makes a good point as well. He's saying it was strange that when Balogun was scoring for us in England in the 21s and he was just dropped for no reason. Uh, one thing you do is when a striker is scoring, keep him in the team. And do you agree with that, Dame, that you've finally got a strike that's scoring goals and it was for England in the 21s? I get that, but he'd scored for the Borough against Peterborough. Then all of a sudden he's out the side. Or do you think it was maybe just Chris Wilder trying to rotate his strikers and keep him fresh with all the games that were coming up? What, what, what's your take on that? Probably a bit of both, James. Um, for me, um, I'd I like Bal I like Balogun. Don't get me wrong. And if you're scoring, you do keep him in. I agree with some that comment there. Um, but as I agree, I as agree with you what you've just said there. We you need to rotate and keep everybody fit, don't you? Um, and I think that's what Wilder's intention is. But um, for me, there's two strikers at the club for me that won't be here next season in in uh that's a guarantee for me and i'll i'll say it right now is Connolly and Sparra. not a chance okay mate okay well at the weekend borough head to south wales to take on a mid-table swansea city who certainly don't seem to have a problem scoring goals at the moment scored four today at reading but also conceded four um and they're a side dim that's undergone a bit of a restructuring this season under the leadership of Russell Martin. They like to dominate possession, play out from the back. Uh, they'll always give you opportunities, but they're pretty easy on the eye. And also, another tough game ahead on Saturday, isn't it? It is. And they've got danger men, as I said, I touched upon it again in the show. Is uh, Joel Perot, he's, he's, a, he's a goal scorer. I think he's got 20, 20 goals this season, I think, after today's double. Um He's a, he's a good player, but they've got Michael Effenby as well. They, they've got from Southampton on uh, on their lawn. Um, yeah. He's he's a canny player as well. So they've got some decent players that can hurt us, James. And uh, it won't be easy going to Wales and trying to get up a trying to get a win. Um, every game is going to be tough. This is what the championship is. I mean, they were leading. I think Reading were leading three one. Or something in the game, or uh, with the of Swansea, like, were, Swansea were winning 4 1, Damon. Yeah, they were winning 4 1. And then it's, yeah. it, it just goes to show this league, and then anything can happen. And then look at Derby the other night beating Fulham 2 1. I mean, who would have thought that? Do you know? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's just unbelievable this league, and that's why we love this league. Yeah, just with regards to the center forward situation again, Michael Pellin's also uh sent in this uh. Comment with regards to Uchi Piazzo. Do you think things could have been differently if we'd have kept him? Michael seems to think he would have done a job for us if we'd have kept him in January. Do you do you think there's any mileage on that, or do you think it was a case of having to balance the books that some players had to admit leave and I know Uchi left on loan at Cardiff? Do, do you think yeah. he, he would have found his way into the team if he'd have still been here now, Damon? For me, no. Um, I'm not. I'm not a big Uchi lover, to be honest. Um, a lot of fans are, and they can't understand why I'm not uh, an Uche lover, but I just don't. I think his hold-up play is, is, is good. Uh, I think that's what he brings to the team, but everything else, he's not a goal scorer. He'd be just the same as what Sparrow and Connolly has, and it, obviously it's, it was to balance the books and bring in uh, Flo Balogun as well, because he's, he's on a high wage. He's on 20 plus thousand a week. So he, we we needed we needed to fund that, you know, James, and uh, that's why some players have gone out on loan, and and I just I just I don't know. We can say Ikpanzo can offer something different, but I've seen snails run faster than him, James. Right, but do you so, just think he, in certain games he would have offered you maybe an outlet where you could get the ball forward? Maybe you could, I know it's maybe not Chris Wilder's style, but. Sometimes we've just lacked any sort of presence up front. In fairness, today I thought Josh Coburn brought that on when he came onto the pitch. Not only with yeah, his physical presence, but his movement. And I just thought that was lacking in the first half today um, with the, the centre forwards. And I don't have a, I don't have an issue with Duncan Watmore because he put a hell of a shift in on Friday at Bournemouth. I was surprised he started again today. But I just thought we had nothing at all. And as, for me, in some games, maybe Ike Piazzo would have given us something and I'm surprised we maybe haven't used Coburn a little bit more because 
we just don't seem to be having any sort of presence or movement at the top end of the pitch at the moment. Yeah, I think I think for me, um, yeah, it, it depends who uh, would have given that hold up play, but he's probably looked at it and thought, oh well, look, I've got Josh here, um, I've got and Andras um, can hold the ball up, which he does in in certain games. He doesn't offer now else, but he can hold the ball up. Um, and he's probably thought, oh well. He's not getting much of a game time, so I'll chip him out on loan, see if he comes good there, and then we'll bring him back and have a look at him in the new season. But that's what he's uh, that's what he's done, and he's brought Flo in and uh, Connolly, and that hasn't paid off to a certain extent as we would have hoped for. So only Wilder knows he's made errors here and there, but you have to make decisions. That's part and parcel of a football manager. Yeah, yeah. Steve uh, up the borough says Wilder's going nowhere, lads. So, yeah, we'll wait and see. It's uh, certainly going to be an interesting few days with regards to the borough before we reach that match with Swansea at the weekend. Um, and in terms of when we are down there, Damon, hopefully we don't have a repeat of uh, the corresponding fixture in South Wales last season where uh, Neil Warnock nearly blew a gasket at the end of the game following the performance of referee Gavin Ward, who... Uh, Disallowed perfectly good Borough goals, wouldn't award us a penalty, then gave Swansea a debatable penalty in the final minute of injury time. Hopefully, it'll be a little bit different this weekend, there. Eh? Yeah, hopefully. I think it was. I think it was George Savile, wasn't it? The I've gone back to it when it wasn't a penalty, um, yeah. which was absolutely insane. How we didn't give that because it was a stonewaller. I just watched that uh, the other night. To be honest, again that game back and. Uh, it, it, baff, it baffles me some of the refereeing decisions. And can I just say as well, James, that the referee Darren England today, absolutely terrible. He was absolutely shocking. Pulling out, what, pulling what, the what performance, Damon? You what? Sorry, James. What, what upset you about his performance today, mate? He's just everything. It's just the referees, the the, the power. The when when our players were getting pulled on the shirts and everything. You could see it. Uh, but I think Bowler made up for that, especially in the second half with that challenge. My God, I thought he was going to get sent off. <laughs> and, and Swansea at the weekend, where do you see the threats coming? I know you mentioned Joel Perot there, the, the Dutch uh, striker they've got. Where else do you see any other threats from them at the uh, uh, weekend? Uh, I don't know much about the team, but uh, I think the, the Michael Effenby is a danger man as well. Um, he's 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 a good player. Um, I think that the their wingers. I think uh, is it Oliver Nitchum? Is it the the Oliver Nitchum? Yeah, he used to be at Celtic. Yeah, he's yeah, a, he's, he's, he's a, a can, front, yeah, he's a, he's a canny player. Um, definitely watch out for him as well. He can punish us. Uh, yeah. especially Next for a man, Cyrus Christie. Cyrus Christie. Yeah, yeah. Just let's do a number on him and get a result. That's all I say. That's I'm not. I'm not bothered about which team turns up as long as we turn up and put in a performance. Um, and if we go down fighting and we lose a game, but I, I just want that fight and desire, and I haven't seen it in the last couple of games, James. Okay. So go on then, Damon. What's your prediction for Saturday? Will we finally see Borough score a goal after four games of shooting blanks, or I is think or misery. I think it'll be a scrappy 1-0 win. For the Borough? Yeah, of course. I think we'd all take that right now, Paul, definitely. <laughs> that would be fantastic. Uh, talking to strikers, Andrew Smith said today, the man that got the second goal for his field today, an ex-Borough striker, Jordan Rhodes, and he said, how good did we make him look today? Shame he didn't oh, play like that for us. And he did play very well today, considering I don't think he's got any pace at all, but he led the line well and he was a handful for our defence and he does what he's done all through his career. He took his goal exceptionally well, didn't he? He did. He did. I mean, I saw his goal right behind his goal as well, seeing it. Um, I don't know if Daniels could have done better. I don't think he could really stop that, to be honest. I don't even if Lumley could have done better, to be honest. Uh, it's just one of those goals. Um, Defence was caught out. Um, I think it was like three on two at one stage. Um, managed to get back, but he, he scored and he got a fair reception from the Borough fans, which was nice to see um, when he came off. 
and he was substituted later on. Um, but he didn't, as I said, he didn't put half the uh, performances that he did uh, for his field that he did today. So it just reminds me of someone else. It was uh, a certain player who's on loan somewhere else. I won't say. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Damon, Borough fans, we've reached the end of the show in this week's Monday night show. Uh, my thanks go to Damon for joining me. Thanks very much, Damon. Cheers. Always a pleasure, James. And as always, Borough fans, thank you so much for joining us today. I know it's been a bit of a rubbish day with the Borough being beaten and everything else that's going on at the moment. But uh, hopefully brighter days are ahead. Um, keep the faith. That's what we do as Borough fans. Um, we'll be back next Monday night to talk about all the things that go on during the next seven days, I'm sure it's going to be interesting and there'll be loads to talk about, not just the Swansea game, but other things off the pitch as well. We'll also be prepared for a double header at home at the Riverside where we've got Cardiff and Stoke City in the final home game of the season uh, taking place the following weekend. But until then, from us all at Borough Fan TV, take care, have a good week and up the Borough. Up the Borough.